Hello, and welcome to Heart of Ruin, a Fire Emblem 5e game. Week 3. How's everybody doing? Good. Awesome. Pretty good. Yeah, we didn't have a game last week, unfortunately, due to scheduling. But we are back this week with a vengeance. And hopefully no deaths. Let's see about that. I think that's my line. <laughs> I might kill them all the party first. I fireball the ground. In D and D, I would be very surprised. <laughs> but before we get into anything too far, anything interesting happen with you guys is two weeks? Been on holiday, came back from holiday. Almost crashed in my driving lesson about half an hour ago. Yeah, good stuff. Glad you live over there then. I'm a threat to society. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's very proud. I know I am. Very proud. I wish they were. Most of the drivers in my city are, so... If anything else, if no one has to say... No, not really. We can jump back into this. Anybody want to make an attempt at describing what happened in the last game? Last time? We found that it's like an abandoned city thing, and there's like vampires in it, and they did all like the boogies. And so I tried to shoot one with lasers, but rolled like four, seven, and four twos in a row. So Scram was completely inefficient and ineffective. Also, we like we saved a person, and we told people we had like chicken flavored berries, and yeah, good things happened. We did God's work. One of them, at least. Yeah. So, after the end of last week, you guys just concluded a rather intense combat that left one of your party members, Vannon, severely wounded, but with the aid of Annalise's healing magic and her confidence that the wound wouldn't fester or turn into anything worse, you're able to move past that rather surprise interaction with the creature that had large razor sharp teeth that rimmed its mouth and attacked like a bestial form but returning back to the here and now the scene opens with the group currently looking among Van and making sure everything's fine and those that aren't making sure that the quarry, the woman that they woman. found in here, looks to be of proper health and mind. Though, cursory looks show her eyes wide open, her mouth's, mouth, mouth currently chewing on her nails out of fright, hiding behind the chair that Cain securely placed himself in between her and danger. Hmm. This is where we open up. You. Uh, are you all right, Miss? Looking frantic and traumatized, the only thing really that comes from her mouth is obscene Like you can't really comprehend what she's saying. She's stuttering over herself and eyes wide as if she's seen the most frightening dream or horrendous act that she's ever encountered. Hmm. Um... Am I able to see this? Uh, depends on what you're doing right now. What are you doing? Um, I don't think I'm doing much. Uh, just looking over Bannon's wounds and making sure, you know, it's 
his wounds aren't festering and stuff and maybe once in a while um glancing over at uh this mysterious lady um I have an ability called Emissary of Peace. Um, it says, whenever making charisma checks to calm violent emotions or counsel peace, advantage on roll. Um, would would it be okay to use that uh, ability to like try to calm her down? I would say that would be a good thing to use. All right. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to go up to this lady and uh, I'm going to say, <clears throat> please, calm down. We're, uh, we're your friends. There's no need to worry. And I roll this with advantage. Okay. Embrace the night. Uh, well, it didn't help much. As you bring these words to her, trying to snap her out of whatever delusion she's suffering. She quickly snaps her head towards you, teeth still chattering, fingers biting on nails that in the corners of your mouths or mouths again. That's gonna be my, uh, gosh, what does Matt Mercer always say wrong? Sigils. I have a feeling that your world's good. It's like a foolie monster. With Everyone multiple has mouths. multiple mouths. Everyone has what do they call them? The the gibbering something? Gibbering mouths. Gibbering mouthers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she's biting on her nails, and on the edge of her lips is pools of blood from her biting onto her nails with so much stress. But with you talking to her like this, it seems to at least pierce the surface enough for her to blink a couple of times and register what she's doing enough to pull her fingers out of her mouth. Okay, well, with that, I'm going to use my healing hands to uh, cure her fingers to heal them up. I'm going to spend ten of my healing hands. How's her fingers looking? After reaching down and touching her, you watch as the skin that was bit raw slowly starts to mend itself and recover over the wounds, carrying the surface level damage. And something else, not too sure, but something else was cured inside her. Excellent. What, what, what did you just do? I used the power of my key to heal you. It's something that we all have inside of us. Who are you? She says now, really, for the first time, taking in the scene that's before her. Kane, do you... Mind telling this lady? Uh, yes, my my name is Kane. This here is Sebastian. We're... I'll, I'll look around to the others. Are they even near? <laughs> <laughs> I'm poking the thing with my staff. Kind of okay. in this mouth so you're, the you're on the looking. other side of the room. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't be afraid. We're we're here. We're on a journey to stop the influx of demon attacks. We happened across this town and something seemed to miss. So you're here to save us. She says now, looking to you, Kane, and grabbing hold of whatever loose hanging clothes you have. Um, I'll reach up and gently take her hands in mine. And just look her in the eye and say, yes, of course, we'll do what we can. I'd like to ready an action. Okay. 
if she if it looks like she's going to go bite him on a misty step behind her and drop a grasp her head. I don't trust people in this town. There are no damsels in distress. As you say this, though, Kane, go ahead and make a just a general charisma check. Oh, general, great. Do I get advantage or no? She is a part of your people, so yes, since you have the noble talent. <laughs> well, not that it mattered. But as she well, looks at you, bad. her eyes just seem to well up with emotion as she digs her head into your hands that's holding onto hers. As she, only thing coming from her over and over again is just, thank you, thank you. Um, of course, and I'll try to console her comforty, comfortingly. Much to how the other man looked before in the other house, her body is completely emaciated. Her clothes is more like loose-fitting sheets than clothing as it hangs on her body. And her skin is more pale than any other color. And her face looked like it was drained of any like liveliness it once had, but portrayed that it couldn't be more than the age of someone in their late 20s. But with whatever went wrong with her, it tripled her age almost um Annalise uh could we have a good berry to give her oh yes of course she says as she takes through her bag and moves to you Kane and after turning once more to make sure Vannon's okay giving him a nod takes out a, gay, a good berry and hands it to you Kane um I'll hold it out to the woman here you should eat this it's it might help you except for that good berry trust me it tastes like chicken <laughs> here we go again <laughs> <laughs> yep. On lift the chicken, Barry. Like yes, uh, a, a man from the other, uh, another house. He had one. He said it was, he said it was fine. She would, yeah, look, at, she would look at it hesitantly, but taking what you say, Kane, into heart. She would take it from your hand and, with much hesitation, take a bite into it as her eyes would open up with excitement, emotion, and every positive emotion, like, feeling that she could have as she consumes the good berry and looks up at you guys like you're her true saviors now, not people that she was originally worried about I feel content oh, I'm happy to hear that and as she says it even though it's three short words the weight to content seems to be heavy Um, just from my memory, the ghoul thing came from the chimney into the fireplace. It did. I'm gonna like, give Valen like a tap on the shoulder, like nod towards it, and then poke my head in. Have a look. That one 
intend to interrupt the good Barry Love. As you move over, the fireplace is still lit and burning weak coals. But uh, yeah, it's fine. I've got resistance to fire. As you lean your head out and up looking past the smoke, trying to see where this creature could have came from, the most strangest thing out of this entire like exchange is seen. The fact that the chimney is a closed top chimney with a valve with no sign of forced entry. Poke my head back in. So I walk up to Bannon. It didn't come in from outside. It's been in there for a while. Strange. And there Excuse was no me. broken part of the chimney that perhaps it accessed through the attic. Scumbag shakes his head. Excuse me, miss. Like, with her eyes still filled with like tears of emotion, she would turn to look at you. Kind of like poke the dust pile with my stick. Did you know he was in there? Well, it was in there. She would just shake her head. I, I'm assuming it had to break through the top of the chimney and came in that way. I'm going to roll an insight check. Yay! I rolled a natural twenty. What a waste! Could you believe her? <laughs> hmm. Sort of squint. That's your second floor to this building. Yes, but it's after the smoke or the mist came, the no, fog. I nailed it shut. I couldn't well, waste we didn't the get in through the... Go on, finish. I couldn't waste the effort of trying to keep track of that much of a house by myself. So you lived here alone? I lived here by myself, yes. Did you happen to seal anyone in up upstairs? Her face would, like, scrunch in horror to the mere thought. Of course not. It's barbaric. Perhaps we should some... look upstairs. Yeah. To point as well as stairs, please. Is there any uh, obvious stairs that we can see to go up? Giving a cursory look to the room, you can look past this main area in the living room that there's a kitchen area that's looks like it's in deep disarray but looking past the kitchen area you could see staircases leading up I'll uh, lead the way upstairs I'll follow making the journey up the staircase you head up about 12 steps as you reach the door in question that, much to her story, is boarded tightly with about 12 to 15 different boards, even cross-lapped, all nailed into the door itself. That's an awful lot of boards nailed to just limit her cleaning abilities. I think she knew something was up there. Yeah. Um, I'll rip the boards down, you get ready. If need be, I can make you quick. I'm having comprising boards off the door frame. Ripping me fingers. So, with both of you up here, it's much of a routine task to get the boards off the door. As... It takes about, give or take, five to ten minutes to do so. So while you guys are doing that downstairs, what are you guys doing? Um, I'm going to keep asking her some 
if she knows anything. So, um, Miss, if you don't mind, could you provide us some information about these creatures? Oh, when the fog left and the bird face men went with it, they seem to have come from the ashes almost. Normally at night, but everyone that stayed in their house, they seem to ignore. They came from the ashes. She would give um, a curt nod. Do you know anything about this black mist that came through? How did it infect everybody? I, the most I know is that some people reacted badly, others didn't. I'm not too sure what it is, but it marked this town. I think we're doomed to meet people. At first, people saw shadows. Then, food stopped tasting right. It, it was horrible. Watching all those children die from not being able to eat. But what came after was worse. The ones that couldn't survived, the ones that couldn't eat, that weren't strong enough to protect themselves. She, she then, like, puts a hand over her mouth as tears begin to well up. The mere thought of the encounter running through her mind, seeming to bring her back to that terrified place once more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I brought back those memories. Any information that you can give us, though, will bring us one step closer to helping this town. She begins to close her eyes and hyperventilates, calming herself, bringing her to a place where she can feel comfortable speaking again. Before nodding, I do know that when they came, there was a sound that I don't think I'll ever forget. It was a sound of nightmares. It was like the most baritone voice echoing over 18 second syllable that just vibrated to myself to the very core to the point that I thought it was going to stop my heart A voice you say did it say anything in particular? It didn't say any language but it spoke it spoke to the point that I could feel it, but I didn't understand it. It... Karink. Karink. I... I'm sorry. That's, that's all I can muster to understand from it. That's fine. Thank you for telling us that. Did this voice come when the mist came or when the creatures did? When the creatures did. I see. I'll glance over at Sebastian, see if he 
recognize that language, maybe? <laughs> You obviously don't. <laughs> Are you muted? I am muted. Um, I, I don't understand it. I mean, even in real life, I don't understand it, so. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck if I know. I, um, Sebastian, let's say that, um, how, how does, how does the interior of this house look? Is there anything out of the ordinary, anything that, um, seems broken or stuff? Out of the house itself, you could see next to the chair in the living room that was knocked over, a small coalescing pile of knitted blankets and clothing and on the other side of it like knitting needles and many balls of yarn besides that much to all the other houses that you've seen in this town so far the blackened windows that seem to be scarred by candle heat to put soot on it on the inside I, I see Hmm. Well, um... I, I can't really do much with that, so, um, let's say... Um... Let's say, let's say that I'm just with Kane, tending to this lady, and, uh, her wounds if she has any left. So as you tried to look to Sebastian to see if he had any inkling to understand the language, his face doesn't seem to show any. I'll just sigh under my breath. And look, look to the woman again. Now these creatures, do they, is, can they starve? I'm assuming they feed on people. She would, like, open her mouth and close it and just, like, nod. They do feed on us. Though, it's been going on like this for just a couple days now I I don't know if they have the capability to starve I see you mentioned somebody else was alive yes um a man what was his name I don't recall his name <laughs> He had a dog, too. Did we even get his name? The mayor? Is that who he is? Large house in the center of the city? Yes. He survived. She actually looks to be, um... Taking that with relief as she says that. Yes, he survived, and perhaps there are more survivors. We were actually, that's what we were looking for. You need to check on them. As far as I know, these creatures never came out the middle of the day. I don't even know how it got in my house. If you weren't oh. here... Go ahead. She kind of just trails off with that.
the obvious Car- outcome of if you weren't here in her voice. Yes, uh, of course, we're going to check on others to make sure they're safe. Perhaps Scram and Van and are having luck in figuring out how it got in. I surely hope. And with that, the scene transitions back to you, Scram, grabbing hold of the last board, ripping it off its hinges as the door is left naked in front of you. Yeah, I'll do I don't know. <laughs> I pull out my staff and kind of like look at Van then. Sure. Gives a bit of light just in case. Couldn't hurt. Yeah, cast light on my staff. Then push the door open. The sound of creaking, rusted hinges echo in your ears while the door is pushed open. Pitch black is immediately assaulted over your senses that it's disrupted at the scene of your light coming over your staff into the room. Taking a cursory look, you see what looks like a bedroom that hasn't been seen or tended to in a couple of days with the familiar sign of dust collected there from the other houses. But added to the dust, the scene of shattered glass and the evidence of something in this room messing about. The chilled air blowing into the room from a broken window. Do you hear anything, Venom? Uh, Venom would like to look around. Can make a perception check. Alright, go right ahead. I too will make one for comedic effect. As well. Yeah, it's actually not bad. As the two of you peer into the semi lidded darkness of the room and let your other senses take over, the most relevant thing that comes from this room is the whistle of wind blowing through the window. Vannon, you being pretty sure that if you would have had something been in there, you could have heard it. Is there, um, does this room share a wall with the chimney? Like, can we see if it could have climbed, put a hole in the chimney and climbed down it? Or if, or has this thing just been, like, creeping around the house waiting for a time to strike? As you internally put the structure of this house, like, in mind, the chimney does run along the east end of the room but doesn't seem to show any evidence of foul play. Well, it seems that something broke through the window, but how it got into the chimney uh, from a boarded room is puzzling. Um, could you point me at the wall where the chimney is? I sort of get a bit disorientated. Yeah, I'll point... Should be the chimney should be on this wall, but it doesn't look like the wall's destroyed. Uh, perhaps a closer investigation, or the these walk- can walk through walls, and that's disconcerting. Wall might be hollow. As I say, that let's punch the wall. Try to put my fist through it. Roll a strength check. Okay. Oh boy, I can do this. No, I can't. You bring your fist back, the wall might be hollow as you punch, and it could have, it was like weeks ago that this happened, but you punch, and all that happens is your fist extends, connects, and the rest of your arm continues as your fist buckles and your wrist hits the wall more than your fist. (laughs) 
Wall dot hollow. Oh, that's solid. That's actually a wall. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the chimney was intact when I looked. As you do do this, though, <sighs> pressing your, well, punching against the wall, you see an indent of where you hit. Not so much of an impact indent, more so the kind of indent that's left when you press paper over a water tension surface and you push into it and it's just left a mark of your fist hitting it through the water. So as if something damps on the other side. Look at them and shrug. That's an interesting indentation. It's the I put, wall wet. What do you do, Scram? I run, I run my fingers across the wall. Is the wall wet? The wall is like, bit where wet, I punched. But as you do this, you notice that what's covering the wall is somewhat of a like a wallpaper, and there might be something else on the other side that's doing this. But as you rub your hand against it, the same effect seems to come up. Looks like the wall's flaking off. I'll start ripping at the wallpaper. Just hands you my dagger. That'll make it easier. As you both go through the process of removing the wallpaper from its wall, the scene is then revealed to you to show a odd black stain that is about three feet in diameter, but not an even circle, more like something threw a bucket of ink onto the wall and slowly soaked into the wood there. It just mold. I dump. Uh, can I attempt a nature check? Don't have it proficient, but... Just off of the like similar the idea of what you all know of mold, this seems outside of the capability of mold. This definitely seems wrong. Well, we've got one last thing I could do. Try and get through that wall. So I tap the book holster on my hip. They might just crush it in the fit and leave a nice hole for us. What do you reckon? Well, if beyond the wallpaper is not broken, then the creature didn't go through the wall that way. Breaking the wall any further is pointless, I think. The stain is interesting, though. Um, somebody wallpapered over it. Which seems to indicate that somebody knew there was something wrong with this room and lied to us about knowing about it. Might have been a previous owner. Could be, I suppose. I guess we need to find out how long she's been here. You said it was still damp, right? Looking at it, it's not damp per se, more so that whatever this is is having the effect of what, like, rubbing wallpaper over a wet surface would be. Or more so, its taint is being left on the wallpaper when you rubbed against it. We should, we should get Annalise to look at it, see if it could be, like, demon blood or something. One second. As I just walk around the entire room, like holding my light up against the walls to see if I can all the wallpaper is like that, or is it just this localized point? As you do so, it seems like going over the entire surface of the wall in the room. This is the only area like this, which also happens to be the same one flush with your mental image of where the chimney's at. 
Yeah, it's just this bit. If you want to run downstairs, get on the lease. I'll wait here, make sure the pops out. Yes. So Van and will uh, go down the stairs and say, uh, Annalise, uh, we could use your assistance in determining something that we found up here. Of course. Will, will you two be down here be okay? Yes, we'll, we'll be fine. Go ahead. She would give a curt nod as she would turn to you, Van, Van and Ann. It's like, all right, lead the way. And she would follow up the stairs with you. All right, so we'll show her the spot and say, this isn't behaving like a, a mold or something would, and it was hidden behind wallpaper. Someone tried to paper over it. Uh, can, I'll you, say, like, can you detect I'll come back into the room, I'll poke in the paint with the chair. Just hold the chair up and poke it with the chair legs. See if anything happens. Not a thing. Nope. I'll eventually get bored. But as she comes in and looks at it, she at first seems to be as equally confused about the situation. And immediately <laughs> reconsiders her confusion as she thinks about what this could possibly mean I don't know for sure but could this be evidence of it moving through the wall like a fingerprint of whatever capabilities it had on the surface did you know that creature could move through walls? I mean, if it's a vampire, I... I don't think it's beyond their capability. This is also strange. We're encountering things that I never thought was anything beyond fairy tale as of a few weeks ago. If we could go through walls, why wait until we arrive to attack? Like, if it's a vampire, surely it arrived during the night, faced into the chimney place, and then sat there and waited until we got here. Why not just swoop down and kill her while she's asleep? Fire. The fire the was, fire was still going. The fire's merely embers right now, which means it... Um dimmed enough for it to not be injured passing through it, perhaps. Perhaps he, over the course of the night, had it much more roaring and couldn't pass. Or I just finally got hungry. This is all the same troublesome. Indeed. Why only break this bit? Why, why, why break the window to get in? Scramlet walks over to the window and pokes his head out. As you point your head out, you look at the well shingled home. A little weathered with time, but shingled with um, decent material. Looking out to the street, it's, it's still snowing. Yeah, if it can move through the chimney wall, why wouldn't it have just went, came through the uh, window more quieter? Um, can I... Does the window look like it's been broken for a lot longer time than just perhaps a night or two? Go ahead and roll an investigation. I would like to assist. Yeah, you're assisting, so uh, yeah, I should have rolled that advantage. Yay, helps. Scrum helps. So looking at the window itself, it's hard to tell by the glass if this is today or yesterday or two weeks from now. But taking your glance away from the glass itself and looking at the window frame, 
it seems to have evidence of soggy wood and swelling that indicate that it's probably been like this, open like this, for at least two days. Perhaps it just noticed this morning that the window was broken. The window's been broken for a few, a, a couple days at least. And uh, I highly doubt it would have waited for two, two or more days before hunting her. So perhaps it was just recently, tonight, as it was hunting, found an open window and entered. I'll be honest, I really want to tear that wall down. And there's something behind it. Like there might be more. Like it was dark up there. I didn't see light, so I assumed there was no hole. Is the wall? Uh, is the actual chimney wall that's underneath the wallpaper made out of brick? No, you're looking at wood currently. A wood. Okay, that's what I was wondering. If, I mean, am I right in saying we're going to move her out of this house because, you know, ghouly vampire things already got in, so we'll move her somewhere safe? I believe Annalise had the idea of if we find any more survivors to bring them to the large house in the center of town. Uh, yes. Perhaps that's not such a bad idea. Yes, yes. So we this house doesn't idea. matter then? Um, and I mean this wall is sort of ruined anyway with whatever that is sticking to it so i suppose if you're really intent on damaging it further it's not gonna matter that much at least you heard when gave me permission as i pull out void bringer and I throw a bolt of force at the wall <laughs> all right go ahead you stop? Roll. i rolled a nine I, I, I think i missed the wall <laughs> you did it anyway <laughs> As you attempt to use Voidbringer, the words that you speak to gain power from it echo in the room, leaving chills in the rest of your spines. Though, after finishing the last syllable, nothing seems to come. Wait a second, right? Flick for a couple of pages. Try again. Well, I don't think it's something that we should do with the woman still in the house if something is here. Well, it's safer in the house than now. She's got Kane and Sebastian downstairs. Like, it's not like she's about to get jumped. That thing, even when we were all fighting it, attempted to jump at her still. Yeah, it really didn't think it seemed like her. Oh god, scrap. But, what if there's another one in there, and it's listening to us, uh, gathering information, it's about to get a report back to his vampire masters. Perhaps you should, um, perhaps we should lead the woman out into the sunlight, at least. That's a thing, right? Vampires don't like sunlight. I, not you mention it. It was in sunlight, but didn't seem to have... She kind of pauses and thinks on that for a moment. Which you all do recall as well, when you saw it reaching out. It was in sunlight and had no adverse effect. As she goes quiet, I start reading again. Alright, go ahead. Roll damage. Eleven. As your tome reading the words this time activate to your power or its power allowing you to channel it an invisible force moves out towards the wall and impacts it as a singularity seems to create in the area you targeted, draw, drawing in the wood, breaking it and crumbling it in towards a singularity before it vanishes. 
and chunks of the wood in the wall vanish as well, showing the brick surface that has an equally marked sludge that seems to stain the chimney surface itself. Can we see inside the actual chimney column now? No, you're looking at the chimney wall. Damn it. I was supposed to bore a hole for, straight through the brick. Um, God, it went through quite a distance, didn't it? Sort of knocks on the wall and see how thick it is. I don't like this. No. If they can get through walls this thick, then don't matter what house we put them in, they ain't safe. Do you reckon a church would be any better? At least. From what I know, vampires can't enter holy ground. But then again, vampires can't enter a house where they're not welcomed. But it did it definitely try to drink your blood, didn't it, Madden? Like, it had it all over its face. Yeah, and you can tell that Van and uh, it, it still looks like a bit anemic and everything from it. Uh, there's still effects of it there. And he'll sure. just nod. So if they can't enter a place where they're not welcome, who welcomed it in this one? I don't think the vampires. They don't seem to really fit most of the uh, superstitious lore that Annalise has told us about them. I don't. While she, we were downstairs, something else. she also mentioned that she saw them coming from the ash. What the ash of the people that were burnt at stakes? She would nod. Oh. Perhaps Maybe it's they're angry it's, ghosts. Perhaps it's a vengeance thing. They didn't want to be burnt alive. I guess we're assuming they were burnt alive. They could have been dead when they were burnt, but. I don't think anyone wants to be burnt at all. I think we need to find uh, one of these uh, raven mask folk and find out exactly what's going on here. Uh, the rest is just assumptions and... Conjecture. Yes. I think the blood for thirsty poltergeists. That's what my money's on. Sure. The one that um, goes straight through. But I, what was mentioned also downstairs is... We need to make sure that everyone else is fine. If there's anyone else. Apparently so, she said that these people don't come out in the sun normally, so... This... Was not normal. Um... Then let's go somewhere safe and make a lot of noise to draw people towards us. Like friendly noise. Uh, that's for a party. Does so anyone have a trumpet? I think a lot of our friendly entrances haven't been benefiting of us much late. Oh. But we can try. We probably should check those. Didn't you mention you saw other places that showed life in the air, Vannon? Yes, there were more than one households with smoke in the chimney. Um, we should bring her with us, I suppose, and check the next. Go collect the old dude, in case he's got chimney lurkers. Well, he did refuse to leave his house. He's got his dog now. Might feel more courageous. It's it's a matter of do we uh, sp spend the time and energy to force him out of his house and drag him, him with us, or do we let him be for now? Yeah. 
I think we should move down and discuss this with Kane. That's an excellent idea. So as you all begin to leave out of the room, taking one last cursory look at the sludge rock surface, you imprinted in your minds the eerie scene of the broken window, the boards ripped apart and placed on the staircase heading downwards, and the chill of the wind blowing from outside. We're going to take this time to take our first break. So, thank you guys for watching. We're going to take a 15 to 10 minute break. Go ahead and use the restroom, stand up, all that jazz. We will see you back within that time to see if these guys can figure out what the heck they're dealing with. So, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon. Peace.